Welcome to the story of Open Data. In the story of Open Data, we'll follow the evolution of open data concepts. You've probably read about government transparency and have heard about open data. You may work directly with open data, or you just might be interested in viewing the data in an open data portal. Either way, it's helpful to understand open data and related basic data concepts. Consistently sharing and using data to act on community interests can lead to a culture of evidence-based decision-making in which data becomes essential for good governance. Some other areas where open data creates value are transparency, participation and self-empowerment, improved or new products and services, innovation, improved efficiency and effectiveness of government services. In 2007, a group of open government advocates gathered to discuss and define the concept of open public data. They actively promoted the idea of government data as a public resource, just as our natural resources are shared for the common good. They defined the eight principles of open government during that meeting, creating the framework for our current government open data policies and guidelines. Less than two years later, President Obama signed the Memorandum on Transparency and Open Government, setting out the founding principles of open government, transparency, participation, and collaboration. Since that time, many agencies in the federal government, state agencies, and local cities and counties have worked to share open data to foster transparency, participation, and collaboration. According to Socrata's Open Government Data Benchmark Study, 67.5% of respondents believe that government data is the property of taxpayers and should be free to all citizens. By collecting and sharing data, a government empowers constituents to use data to address community concerns and help its own civil servants find innovative solutions to key challenges. Where did the expectation that citizens own government data come from? In 1967, the Freedom of Information Act, FOIA, was passed. This act provides the public the right to request access to records from any federal agency. Many state and local governments followed with their own laws, allowing citizens to request information. The public, media, business, and other entities have benefited from this publicly available information. But it is sometimes difficult for government to provide the requested data in a timely fashion. Lightening this burden is one of the major goals of many open government data programs. Let's explore what can be accomplished with open data. Here are some examples of government data at work. NYC 311 is a one-stop shop for all New York City government information and non-emergency services like noise and taxi driver complaints, pothole reports, building graffiti, and homeless assistance. There is government data supporting the arts as well. The Public Art PDX app showcases the rich and diverse collection of public art on display in and around Portland, Oregon. There are also for-profit companies that integrate government open data into their products. For example, restaurant health ratings are integrated into Yelp, the restaurant rating app for some municipalities. Property sales data and other real estate-related data is displayed on the Zillow website. Many governments hold citizen hackathons or hack days, events where groups form around solving a certain problem or issue with government data, which is where some citizen-generated projects come from. Other governments develop apps and websites themselves, or with the help of groups like Code for America. What exactly is data, and where do you find it? What makes it open data? If you were a librarian, for instance, you could have data on the number of books checked out from a certain location, or the number of books shipped to individual branches through interlibrary loans, or how many times an individual book has been checked out, and what time of day and year people are most active at the library. What would it take for this data to be open? For data to be considered open data, it needs to have two major characteristics, legally available and technically available. For open data to be legally available, it needs to be explicitly licensed in a way that permits commercial and non-commercial use and reuse without restrictions. Basically, this means that the data must be free for all users. For open data to be technically available, 
it needs to be available in a machine-readable standard format, meaning it could be retrieved and meaningfully processed by a computer. An example of data that may be legally open but not technically open is budget data published as public data in PDF format. A human can read the data in a PDF, but the computer cannot extract or process the data locked into that format. An example of technically open data would be budget data published as public data in the CSV or comma separated values format. This file format is not a proprietary format and can therefore be viewed in numerous freely available spreadsheet programs. Let's say you publish a lot of data in the Microsoft Excel XLS file format. You may realize after reading the definition of open data that when you share these files, they might be technically open, but they might not be legally open. Why? Because owning the Microsoft Excel software license could be a legal restriction to accessing the data. What about private data? There are many federal, state, and local laws around privacy, and not all government data can be open data. Some data contains personally identifiable information data, which could be used to identify, contact, or locate an individual person. Also, for some kinds of government data, there are security restrictions that would cause data to not be freely available to the public. Data must be examined before it's shared, to make sure that it doesn't contain private or sensitive data. We've talked about data a lot, but we've really not defined it. Data is facts or pieces of information. Data can be a single value, like the population of our county is 538, 133 people, or it can be a set of population values. A data set is a collection of separate sets of information that is treated as a single unit by a computer. How is a data set different from a database? A database usually contains data stored in multiple tables, stored procedures, and is complex. In order to upload open data, you need to collect the appropriate data into a single file containing just rows and columns. This process may require some thought and planning based on how the data is stored. You may work with a database administrator or data analyst to pull data from a single location or multiple locations into a single data set. The beauty is that this data set contains only the appropriate information that you want to share. Remember that an important step in preparing open data is to strip out personally identifiable information so that private information isn't published to those not authorized to see it. As we discussed, a data set is made up of rows and columns. The columns in a data set can be thought of as characteristics. For example, a data set might have columns describing budget amounts. Each row in this table represents the budget amounts from a single year. A row has a value in each column that corresponds to the characteristic described in the column heading. An ideal data set is configured this way, and not the opposite, where the rows are characteristics. Including location data in a data set allows the data to be displayed on a map. This requires adding a column with latitude and longitude for the locations. You'll need to think ahead about how you might want to display information so you can be sure to include all the necessary data. What location-based data can you think of that would be useful? It's important that every data set has information describing the data, and this information is called metadata. Title, description, data provided by, license, and contact email are examples of information contained in a data set's metadata. Having good metadata makes the data easier to search for and find. A good data description in the metadata improves the usability of the data because users have a better context about what the data means and where it comes from. Many governments have guidelines for metadata, including standard tags, labels, license guidelines, descriptive title rules, and other helpful rules and standards. While datasets can be useful and interesting, viewing data in tabular form can be difficult to understand. Visualizations help us recognize patterns and trends. The type of visualization that you choose should lead to insights and appropriate conclusions about the data. 
Charts like column, bar, or scatter plot are ideal for comparing value sets because you can easily see the low and high values, such as sales values for multiple years. Did the budget go up? What year had the highest sales tax revenue? Charts like pie, area, or stacked bar are excellent for showing how individual parts make up the whole of something, such as total parking ticket revenues broken down by precinct. In which precinct should you be very careful parking your car illegally? A heat map, which can be a chart or a location map, shows frequency by displaying varying colors or color saturation. We know about data and data sets and databases and data visualizations, but where does data come from? That's the beginning of the open data life cycle. You start with source data and end with outcomes from data. Data can be derived from a single source or multiple sources. The data goes through a process called ETL, short for Extract, Transform, and Load. ETL is the process used to create a data set that has the correct data, is formatted correctly, and is ready to load into the open data platform to share with the world. After collecting and preparing data, the next phase in the open data lifecycle is sharing the data. The data contained in the data sets you've created with the ETL process is made available to multiple data users, such as government, citizens, businesses, researchers, and developers. Data sets are uploaded as tabular data, and then you can derive different views of the data to share, such as maps, charts, and filtered views of the data sets. Remember that having good metadata describing each data set is essential for end users to discover, understand, and have the proper context of the data. The real value in sharing data is that it provides the raw materials for outcomes, such as measuring performance, monitoring and evaluating programs, communication and engagement of residents, as well as breakthroughs by researchers using the data. Santa Rosa, California is seeing their homelessness-related fire and police incidents trend downward because they analyzed the data around the problem, and the solution was as simple as clearing out encampments one hour later in the day rather than during rush hour. They wouldn't have made that connection to rush hour without the data, and they would have no evidence that their actions made a difference without the data. We have learned a lot about government open data, history, terms, and processes. It's exciting to be involved in this important effort.